hey guys and welcome to my channel and to this video today I will do a review of a few of Paul Rubin's products. Here I have a watercolor journal and also pearlescent watercolors, a few banana sponges. Well I'm not sure what I'm gonna use those for if I'm gonna use them in this video but I will definitely try to find a purpose for them later on they're actually for sketching and a few masking tapes. So first I want to start with this sketchbook actually watercolor journal. It comes in two colors, pink and also black. Size of it is a little bit smaller than A5. That's actually, I do wanted to show you to compare it. This is A5 and this is the journal from Paul Rubens. So you can see the difference in the size. This one is 5.2 by 3.8 inches or 19.2 by 13.8 centimeters I think. So uh, what I do love about this sketchbook, this um, journal, let me just move this, paper is hot pressed and it is 100% cotton and acid free. Also it is double sided meaning that you can use both sides of the paper so it's the same uh, it's the same texture on both sides of the paper so instead of 20 sheets you get actually 40 pages. They are also very thick they are 300 gsm and you can definitely use them on the both sides especially if you're using your sketchbook your journal for practicing that is also a very nice feature. When you open it just anywhere in your uh, anywhere in the journal, the pages lie flat. So the two pages are bind together and wherever you open it, it lies flat. That is what I love. Those pages don't get broken at the edges when you turn them, they are just flat. Also one more feature that I do really like about that I don't see a lot in a journal sketchbooks is that is it is pre punctured here just emit do the well, fold it like that so see here it has this line so you can easily uh, rip out your pages one more thing that I really do like that I noticed it is has it has a little pocket on the back can you see that yep so uh, you can store here uh, maybe some of your uh, paintings, finished art. You can store here also maybe some idea list. If you do love to use your journal books on the go, so just put your idea list or maybe some photos or your reference photos you can store here and carry with you. And I guess that is uh, everything I've, I have noticed on the first glance, on the first impression. One more thing there is left to do is to try this one out. Also, I will try this uh, masking tape just to see uh, how sticky it is. Does it, does it uh, rip the paper? How it behaves with watercolors? And the last but not least are the watercolors. These are, as I said earlier, pearlescent, so metallic watercolors and they come in this very very beautiful it's a shiny box i'm not sure if you can actually uh, notice that see that and also when you open it you get this beautiful covered in this beautiful soft cloth with a nice i guess logo from paul rubens and then inside it's again a very very beautiful pink box with your watercolors and inside of the box uh, you get to, uh, the mixing palette place to mix your paints on one side and also on the other side and there is also a brochure with colors of the names and some info it's unfortunately in Chinese but the color names are also written in English here on this page so you get to know the colors and the colors uh, numbers and this is meant this is also a watercolor paper and it's meant to do your swatching I did not do my swatching here I did it on a separate paper but I uh, actually that is also a nice feature you can carry it with you just to always have the have your swatch and 24 colors 
gorgeous colors you can see straight away they're very very beautiful and they do come covered every single is uh, wrapped so I have removed that because I was impatient and I was using it for a different project but they can they come very nicely wrapped in these papers so I did glue them onto paper which I used for swatching I do like to do that have the names and all the info from that little sticker you have also on your swatch I did uh, make a line with ink pen just to see how transparent or opaque the watercolors are and what I have noticed they are transparent but few of them are quite opaque for example this one this is silver black and the last one this one is called flash purple and also a few of those are semi transparent which, which I actually do like and meaning that you can use them also on top of the other watercolors maybe just to add a little detail or something like that and they won't give just the shine they will also give a beautiful color and what I do love also is that some of them are quite grainy which is you know I love grainy watercolors and that's just, that just made me so happy to see that some of them are graining actually especially those two I believe they are going to be my favorite colors this one this also grainy the colors are quite rich here and but they're soft they're not uh, fluorescent I guess that is at least my preference in this set you get 24 watercolors and I do love the selection of colors there are a few lovely greens there are a few lovely uh, pinks if you like pinks well a lot of pinks a violet so some earthy colors so a nice selection 24 colors in a pan that's quite a lot now without further ado let's get to painting I made my sketch with an ink pen and did a little bit of the shading. I did that also because I wanted to see the opacity of the watercolors and straight away when I started to paint I noticed that at the first you would need to grab a little bit more of the paint to get the creamy consistency and to get a little bit more of the pigment so I would definitely advise you before starting to paint to spray your watercolors with water just to lift up the pigment to start the process so after that they were just picking so beautifully so easily creamy consistency quite rich in color and I also noticed that with a lot of water of course they are quite transparent all of those those who are looking quite dark and opaque on the color sheet that I made now are quite transparent so beautifully you can do a very light wash also with them but just adding a little bit more of the pigment that creamy consistency you can get also a darker shade of that color I did use a few colors some blues and also greens and some violet brown and all of those colors I've noticed have a beautiful shine they are not screaming sh screaming shiny but very very beautiful and very I would say elegant shine so I do I do love that I do like that they really do look beautiful and just when you move them and look at them on the sides look quite nice one more thing that I would personally love is to see a one very very dark color in this color palette I was just missing the dark color that I could just use for a contrast but then again that is if you are using only metallics only pearlescent watercolors but if you're combining them with just regular watercolors then that would be wouldn't be an issue because you would have a darker maybe some black or some dark dark gray or dark brown in your color palette but that is something that I was missing here I noticed that the colors were behaving very nicely when I was adding one on top of each other they were mixing beautifully and they looked really gorgeous and not muted not muddy when finished with my butterflies I put the masking tape on the edges and just added a little bit of the green in the background and when adding and removing the masking tape I did notice that it was quite nice it was hold, holding nicely and didn't rip the paper and the paper did react nicely onto the masking tape and did not rip 
Also, one more thing I noticed is that the paper is quite durable. It's very nice. It soaks in that water and paint very, very beautifully. I purposely did add a wash of color and did not pin it down with anything while doing that. And it did not warp at all. That was a very nice thing to see and definitely in a pro column for this paper. So when finished with this, I also wanted to test those watercolors on just a black paper. And well, I first drew this butterfly and I really didn't like how it looked. I didn't like how the colors behaved. They were too, uh, too light and weren't showing their true colors and their beauty. So I decided to make a swatch and then I did a swatch of the watercolors and what I have noticed is that you do need to use a quite amount of pigment for the if you're painting on a black surface so you can't use a light washes because they're simply not visible the colors are not visible you can see the shine but not really the colors they just don't come as vibrant when I did that swatch I noticed also that a lot of the, those colors look quite differently on the black paper and on the white paper. So first, these that are not actually visible on the white paper are quite visible here on the black paper. Also, this color, this is flesh red, completely different. This is the same color. So this one looks a little bit grayish here. And here it's slightly pink, very light pink. So also this color that is the darkest maybe here of them all called flesh purple is completely different than here on the black paper. Also this one, I noticed also that those colors that are darker in the white on the white paper are lighter on the black and vice versa. Those that are lighter and maybe not even that much visible on the white paper are quite visible on the dark paper. So uh, after finished with that, I just noticed that you do need, as I said, to add a little bit more of the pigment if you want your colors to be visible on the black paper. So I did one more, uh, one more painting, one more drawing. This time I did use a little bit more of the pigment and those pigments that showed a little bit more uh, on the black paper. And this time I was pretty satisfied. It was just a doodle, <laughs> so don't judge. Uh, I was just, uh, I was pretty satisfied with them, but I would say that for some reason, I'm not sure, I really would like to use them better on the white paper than on the black paper as for now. Maybe that will change in the future, but for now, that is my opinion. Hopefully this review was helpful to you and you learned something. Maybe it helped you in your decision of getting some new Paul Robin supplies. And if you do like this video, please hit the like button, share it and comment. If you haven't still, please do subscribe to my channel. That really mean a lot to me. Maybe consider joining my channel. And guys, thank you so much again for watching and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.